In 2019, I produced a video as part of my Deadly series that explored the most formidable predators in the NECA and Kenna toy lines. In the four years since, they have continued to expand their range, both recreating existing characters and introducing exciting new individuals with their own complex backstories. As a result, I have re-edited and updated this video in order to decipher just which is the deadliest Yautja in the toy line universe. Before I begin my countdown, I should make it clear that this list will only consider Yautja that were initially created as toys by either Kenner or Neca. Predators who initially appeared in other media and were subsequently turned into action figures will not qualify. Due to the strength of the predators created by the aforementioned toy companies, I will be forced to give some honourable mentions to individuals that would have likely made it onto many other top 5 lists. This revered elder is the leader of a hunting tribe and prefers to continue as an active field general instead of a common elder. This survival specialist trained many young Yautja to endure some of the most extreme environments, including the cold, desolate conditions of alien planets, as well as the searing lava deserts of his homeworld. In addition to this, Crack Tusk possessed some unrivaled ingenuity as he created a plethora of weapons and technology utilised by the Lava Predator clan. However, it was during the events of the comic Predator Life and Death that we finally got to witness Crack Tusk's fighting abilities. Whilst leading his clan on a xenomorph hunt upon planet LV-797, he discovered an engineer juggernaut. In an attempt to uncover the derelict secrets, the clan decided to guard the ship against any intruders, and it was here that they clashed with the Siegson excavation squad. Along with the Hive Wars Predator, Crack Tusk killed three lone marines until he was driven off by the rest of the unit, who gunned down his clan member. However, it was not until later on that we would see just how deadly Crack Tusk could be. When a dropship passed over the derelict, Crack Tusk leaped onto the approaching vessel from the Juggernaut. He subsequently drove his combi stick into it, which destroyed the stabilizers, causing it to crash. Once inside the derelict, Crack Tusk ambushed the squad for a second time, decapitating a marine before turning his attention towards Singer and Roth. Pinning his quarry against a sarcophagus-like object, Crack Tusk attempted to kill Singer, who managed to avoid the wrist blades as they crashed into the object immobilising the Yautja. Unable to free himself, Crack Tusk became nothing more than a sitting duck as he was shot with a pulse rifle at point-blank range, killing him instantly. Ironically, Crack Tusk did not live up to his deadly reputation for always fulfilling each mission and bringing his hunting tribe back alive, no matter the circumstances. It is for this reason that he only gets an honourable mention. For my next Yautja, I stick with Crack Tusk clan as I introduce a predator so deadly that he managed to survive for years on his enemy's home turf. After his tribe were killed in a careless hunt gone wrong, this Yautja was stranded on Xenomorph Prime. With only a damaged ship and limited supplies, the Hive Wars Predator had to be highly resourceful, forging new weapons from the wreckage of his vessel. This individual was forced to live in isolation, constantly wary of his Xenomorph hosts. Initially, he rejected a life as prey and anticipated being rescued from this barren planet. However, in time, he realised that this circumstance was the greatest challenge a true warrior could ever hope for. In a quest for survival, this Yautja would slay many Xenomorph warriors as he survived for years on their homeworld. Eventually, however, his initial desires were answered as he was reunited with a new tribe of Yautja led by Crack Tusk. Bizarrely, it was this saviour that proved to be his downfall. At some point, the Hive Wars Predator and his newfound clan landed on LV-797, where they would find an engineer vessel. During this time, the Hive Wars Predator encountered a team of colonial marines. This Predator would use his custom weaponry, which included curved wrist blades and a scythe-like staff, to brutally kill some members of the Siegson Excavation Squad. The Hive Wars Predator would continue to showcase his deadly traits as he ambushed a search party of marines who were sweeping the area. Ultimately, this individual was wounded before he was unceremoniously gunned down by Colonial Marine Rucker. 
Yes, this predator managed to survive alone on Xenomorph Prime, but was shot dead by a handful of marines. I feel that this was a rather disappointing end to a predator that had such a decorated past, and if it wasn't for this, he would certainly be higher up on my list. Unlike the Hive Wars Predator, my next entry is not yet deceased, although he would have you believe that he is. When a Super Predator clan raided a Yautja village, all were killed and only one was presumed dead. This individual would subsequently use his deceased status to haunt and terrorise his Super Predator attackers. Like a spectre with unfinished business, he would devote his life to systematically terminating the entire race of those responsible for the death of his kind. Only then would this predator's spirit rest. This is the Yautja known as Ghost, a super predator slayer. Living in complete solitude, Ghost has mastered extreme focus and patience, often scouting super predator tribes for weeks before executing his planned attack. Despite possessing a plasma caster, Ghost reserves this weapon for defence purposes only, preferring a close quarters kill instead. This predator utilises specialised thermal dampening netting, a cleaver sword and smart disc as he kills his adversaries. His modus operandi ensures that he witnesses the anguish of his prey as they see him at the moment of their demise. As a result of his cloak and dagger style, he has become the subject of Super Predator Law, a boogeyman Yautja whom his targets fear. This psychological edge has given Ghost a significant advantage in battle, as his opponents are often so fear-stricken upon seeing him that they are unable to react. As a killer and tormentor of a larger subspecies of Yautja, Ghost certainly deserves his place on this list. At number 4, we have an individual who does not restrict himself to just super predators. It could be argued that there is no task or opponent too great for this Yautja. As leader of the notorious Serpent Clan, Viper and his tribe have a reputation as the most skilled and lethal team of mercenaries throughout the Yautja underworld. Surely the leader of such an elite team deserves a place on my most deadly list. Always attacking their enemies with venom, Viper along with his brother Snake specialise in xenomorph hunts and the occasional clan war. In addition to this, he has also assisted in forces when tracking down bad blood in exchange for immunity from various crimes. Therefore this individual is clearly an expert in eliminating some extremely deadly prey. However, when there is no mission to complete, Viper and his clan remain active, targeting those possessing valuable tech or pursuing honour trophies which are used for trading or just reserved for the next job. This predator is always thinking ahead, planning for the next assignment. Further examples of his forward planning could be witnessed when Viper collaborated with Crack Tusk on hunts in return for weapons and bio gear for his serpent clan. This technology was vital for their survival during future missions upon foreign planets. Some of this equipment has included his Blade Fighter, a fast low altitude single passenger transport vehicle designed to hunt xenomorphs whilst doubling as a mobile armory. As already demonstrated, Viper is a highly technologically advanced Yautja who is always keen to sample the latest equipment. This was elucidated when he wore the prototype ambush suit of invincibility armour developed by the Yautja enforcers. The armour was designed as a cloak shielding system capable of generating a vector field from the user's energy. Despite being functional, its effects proved hazardous to those wearing it, sapping them of strength after a short period. Other side effects included a discolouring to the face and eyes due to dehydration that could lead to near-death exhaustion. Attempts to improve the armour's design proved unsuccessful and the enforcers considered cutting their losses with this project. However, everything changed when the Viper Predator was hired to use the armour for ambushing a clan riot. Incredibly, Viper endured longer than any other Yautja within the armour and managed to subdue the rampaging adversaries. As a result, he was allowed to keep the ambush armour as part of his own arsenal, only using it in extreme situations. When inside the armour, Viper is always devastating to anyone or anything standing in his way. However, it is not only his lethal technology that makes him deadly. The fact that Viper endured longer than any other Yautja within the suit highlights his durability. To summarise, Viper is this high up on my list due to his termination of elite prey, reputation, collaborative skills, leadership qualities and durability.
Simply put, Viper and his clan only have one code to follow, finish every job. It may be hard to fathom that there are three other predators that are deadlier than Viper. My next three entries are so deadly in fact that they have almost reached a godlike status. There are many qualities that can make a predator deadly. We can consider its quantity of kills, triumph over elite opposition, fighting capabilities, tactical acumen and leadership qualities. But what about the ability to start a revolution? In terms of Yautja history, the story of this individual is Genesis. It all began 4,000 years ago with Nightstorm, the first predator who went rogue and broke the Yautja honor code. Disapproving of the restrictive laws, he felt that the code weakened the predators and stood in the way of the kill. Nightstorm believed that all prey were equal and should be treated as such, armed or not, sick or healthy, male or female, young or old, no one would be spared. His ruthless message resonated with other predators who eventually joined his clan as he became an elder super predator. It is believed that all super predators are direct descendants of Nightstorm, the very first super predator, adopting his superior genetic distinctions. This morphology includes greater muscularity, more reptilian skin, swept back dreadlocks and longer faces. With his own Super Predator army at his disposal, Nightstorm began the Super Predator vs. Yautja feud, which continues to the present day. However, Nightstorm is no inactive general and possesses some very lethal weapons of his own. He is equipped with switchblade-like wrist blades, a combi stick and a modified plasma caster which produces a higher rate of fire. However, despite all of this, I feel that there are some more subtle clues that elucidate Nightstorm's deadliness. Due to his geographic location, it seems as if Nightstorm is intertwined with ancient Egyptian culture. Firstly, his golden armour has connotations of royalty, perhaps suggesting his regal status amongst his kind. More significantly, however, is the rather strange design of his biomask, which resembles the Egyptian deity Anubis, also known as the God of the Dead. Perhaps this suggests that Nightstorm is almost like a Yautja Grim Reaper, and what could be a deadlier symbol than that? Furthermore, Nightstorm is also known as Scabbard, a type of beetle which in ancient Egyptian times symbolised rebirth or regeneration. This could therefore suggest Nightstorm's mission of starting again, regenerating the Yautja honour code to match his own ideology or seeing the Yautja race reborn in his own image as super predators. Whichever way you look at it, this is a highly deadly Yautja that has spawned a more lethal subspecies of his own kind. Although we know the Yautja to be a hulking species of alien hunters, thousands of years ago they were in the early stages of their evolutionary development. Therefore my next entry was born into a world where his kind were subjugated by a parasitic insectoid race. This hostile environment is what created the predator that is my second place entry and quite possibly the saviour of the entire Yautja species. The one known as Kail, meaning rage, was forced to live in a time where his people known as the Hishku Ten were invaded and ruled by the Amengi. The Hish was subjected to the worst living conditions as they were used for slave labour, experiments, gladiatorial sports, game hunting and even food. This ruthless nomadic civilization swarmed Yautja Prime in search of new technological resources after exhausting their own. Upon extracting what they needed from the Yautja's ancient ancestors, they sadistically forced them to participate in blood sports for their own entertainment. The popularity of these spectator fights proved big business for the Amengi, who specifically selected larger members of the Hish species for combat in order to win lucrative wages. Eventually, some individuals would even be chemically enhanced and trained to become more lethal gladiators who generated enormous wealth for their owners. In time, this perpetual process would affect the evolutionary development of the Yautja, where only the strongest and largest survived, spawning a race of beastly behemoths. After hundreds of years of evolution, Kail was born into this world and gained notoriety as one of the largest and fiercest Hish fighters. The Amengi had never seen one quite like Kail, and as he matured, he commanded respect and fear from even his own captors. 
However, Kyle was not all brawn and no brains, as he used his abnormal intelligence to form a rebellion with the rest of his race against his masters, while simultaneously appearing loyal to them. He secretly dedicated himself to liberating his people and gradually allied himself with other powerful slaves throughout the established territories. Meanwhile, the Amengi rulers grew so affluent and arrogant that they failed to see the threat that they had created. Like a predator stalking its prey, Kayil and his chosen tribe would wait for the perfect moment to strike their oppressors. A strategic insurrection was orchestrated by Kayil against an Amengi army that had become soft after centuries of inactivity. Within days, the Amengi leadership was usurped as they faced the onslaught of countless oppressed Hish generations, culminating in these brave warriors. The Amengi's advanced technology and tough exoskeletons proved to be ineffective against the monsters that they had created. Upon overthrowing the tyranny of the Amengi, Kail seized one of the larger carcasses, cut out the external shell and created body armor for himself, wearing his enemy as a trophy. The technology left behind from the Amengi would lay the foundations for Yautja society as they would expand upon it, blending the scientific and more animalistic aspects of both cultures. Eventually, the Yautja became a race of hunters, taking trophies from their quarry in order to honour their liberators' methods against the Amengi. A true hunting tribe was formed, and these were the first predators. Additionally, Kail also forged the earliest Yautja weaponry from bone whilst freeing his race from the Amengi rule. These munitions included his alpha sickle, wrist blades, spear and bear trap. He would subsequently add more technologically advanced weapons to his arsenal with the net gun and plasma caster. In honour of his achievements, Kail would forever be known as the first hunter and a legend to his people, the Alpha Predator. So, with such a legendary origin, why have I not selected the Alpha as the deadliest predator in the Toyline universe? Well, my rationale may be controversial, but based on theories of evolution. Despite his larger size and intelligence, the Alpha was still at the earliest stages of Yautja development. As a result, would he be as large, strong and advanced as subsequent predators? In my opinion, this is where the Alpha falls short. He was the deadliest of his time, but not of more contemporary times. To use an analogy, consider prize fighters from the inception or earlier years of boxing. Although fighters from the 1800s may have been more ferocious, they tended to be smaller and less skilled than today's pugilists. However, as training methods, nutrition and techniques have evolved, so have fighters. Just consider how the first recognised heavyweight champion, John L. Sullivan, would have done against Mike Tyson or Lennox Lewis from more modern times. It would barely have been a contest. It is therefore this logic that prevents me from placing the Alpha at number one, and perhaps I have even been generous at placing him in second place. With this in mind, we shall move on to number one, where we have a predator whose status has transcended that of Nightstorm and even the Alpha. He is simply known as the Grand Elder. The clan leader, also known as Grand Elder, remains the supreme leader of Yautja Prime. Ruling for centuries, this Yautja has proven to be the wisest and strongest leader amongst all elders. In order to put that into perspective, let us determine what it takes to be a clan leader. To achieve this rank, a predator must initially have slain three xenomorph queens. Once this has been proven, they are qualified to cleanse an entire Xenomorph Hive larger than 300 members with a maximum of two other predators. Only at this point can a predator achieve the rank of clan leader. When you consider that only 5% of Yautja society attain this status, only then can you comprehend the significance of this achievement. Now what we are saying is that the Grand Elder is the very best of this 5%. Some of the aforementioned individuals have made it onto my deadliest list because of their kill record, intelligence or fighting prowess, however the clan leader seems to have every possible trait in abundance. He can boast a superior hunting record, exceptional fighting skill and great cunning. In actual fact, his qualities are legendary, earning him the highest position in Yautja society. However, not all predators have appreciated his achievements or rule over Yautja Prime. Several tribal uprisings and assassination attempts have been made on the clan leader, however he has thwarted them all. 
He has proven to be an invulnerable force and is heavily armed with some of the most lethal weaponry. His deadly arsenal consists of a shoulder-mounted plasma caster, heavy armor, double-bladed staff, and most significantly, his mechanical tendrils. By combining his physical prowess with all this weaponry, he has earned the respect of his people and struck fear into those who oppose him. Due to his elusive nature, stories and legends have grown from what little is known of him. He is believed to be immortal, possessing abnormal strength and abilities, and many believe that his mechanical tendrils are sentient beings under his divine control. Just like Nightstorms, the clan leader's biomass tells a story. Its appearance mirrors that of the Egyptian god Set, who was known as the god of brute strength, violence and war. These are all qualities which the clan leader possesses in abundance, therefore perhaps he shares more than just a physical resemblance to Set. The iconic image of his mask may therefore symbolise that he has reached the level of a deity. It is therefore my opinion that the clan leader wins the title of Deadliest Yautja in the Toyline universe. Next time my top 5 Deadly Yautja series reaches its conclusion as I invite back my past champions from the cinematic, gaming, toyline and literary universes as well as some deadly challenges for an epic all-star final. I have the unenviable task of trying to determine just who is the ultimate deadliest predator.